Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary on Martha's Vineyard. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. Uh, I'm an attorney. I work at a firm called Myrick O'Connell. There were a bunch of us, about 70 lawyers. We're actually the biggest firm that isn't actually centered in Boston, uh, that's located in Massachusetts. But anyway, this show is not about law, and it's not about, some of you may have seen seminars, and I always talk about my friends Frank and Mary and their kids, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. And their goal, as you've heard, is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if they live on Martha's Vineyard, they want to stay here on Martha's Vineyard. They don't want to move away. They don't want to move in with the kids in San Francisco. No, they want to stay here. So the question that this show tries to answer is, who are the people and what are the programs you need to know about if that's your goal? You want to stay here for the rest of your life. And, and in order to do this show, therefore, I really needed somebody that knew that, which was my friend Sandy Cordobi, whom many of you have known from Horizons Geriatric and been here all of her life, because she knows everybody. Although in this case, our guest today, we both know my friend Leslie Clapp from the Center for Living, right? Thank you very much for coming on. Thank Leslie, you. you were one of my first guests on these shows I want to say like seven or eight years ago, and true. I really had to convince you. You're like, oh, I don't know if I want to be on TV. <laughs> this is going to be really bad. And at that I point, you still, still have to convince me. <laughs> well, I noticed that. I remember that. And and I, and I know that. And since then, a lot's happened to the Center for mm -hmm. a Living. At that time, you were a little bit in Egerton mm -hmm. and a little bit in Tisbury, and oh, you're doing yeah. this and that, right? right. Mm -hmm. But as a result of the credibility that evolved as a result of all of that, you're now kind of in a different place. Yeah. So, That's true. so Sandy and I decided that we would invite you back on so you could just kind of talk about that a little bit. So you could talk about kind of where you've been from, from there to where you are now, mm -hmm. right? And how that's going. And from your own perspective, kind of how your sense of the issues has globalized or changed regarding the folks that you deal with and how to deal with all of these issues. And I, I, we've, I've realized this is ideal well, you know, to be co-hosting this with Sandy, because many of her folks that she's dealing with all are some of your folks, sure. right? We, yep. So you're really dealing true. with some of those, yeah. right? Some of those many mm -hmm. issues. So mm -hmm. welcome back. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about where the Center for Living kind of has come to okay. and what's happening there and what's going on. Okay. How's that? Well, so a year and a few months ago, um, we moved into our new building which is at 29 Breakdown Lane in Vineyard Haven. Um, I'm getting used to the name still. I kind of like it actually. Yeah. Um, but uh, Which for so, people who were trying to find this, mm -hmm. it's off of? It's off of State Road, right down off of, State. off of Holmes Hole Road. Off of Holmes Hole Road, right. 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 So if I'm driving down yep. from Tisbury and I go by the, star the, uh, the I would say the Starbucks, oh my God. The Black <laughs> if Dog. If I go by the Black Dog. Yes. It's the road on the left, and yes. then you go up the dirt road, and then you, yep. and that's, and then there's a sign, and you can. So if any that's people right. wanted to wander by to find this, yes. it really exists. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And we're beginning to be found yep. more, more often. Um, so a year and a few months, we've been in the new building. It's it's been a whole year of transition, um, from being um, located in two places and having to move our programs and our staff back and forth on a daily basis. Because you used to be in two of the We used to be in, in the, the Tisbury Senior Center and the Edgartown Senior Center. So um, what we were able to do there was wonderful, um, but limited. Um, so now that we have our own space designed for us and for our programs, um, we can really begin to think about expanding and reaching out to the community, serving more people, kind of helping the community understand what we do and how we can serve the needs of folks in the community. Um, what I find over the years, and this has been building and changing over the last, I would say, 10 years, is there's a whole lot more um, focus and emphasis that we need to put on helping families who are dealing with dementia and taking care of loved ones at home um, because that's what most people want to do, is be at home. That's what Frank and Mary um, want to do. And I yeah. feel like yeah. that's, I mean, we, we take care of a wide range of folks. We help folks with anything from Parkinson's to um, um, sight loss and hearing loss and just people who need to be able to be in the community and have a, a place to feel at home um, and give their caregivers some um, respite and support. So. 
Um, so that I feel like is evolving over time and we're finding more and more need in the community for that caregiver support and that um, and the community education, not only education for caregivers, but the community as a whole, um, because they're serious issues and very complicated, um, very complicated both cognitive and physical um, issues that people encounter as they age, and it gets more complicated. And it gets more. Now, yeah. By by the way, I think I think the once again for the benefit of folks, I always, you know, you always assume that people know. True. Well, you know, and that's mm -hmm. not necessarily. Mm -hmm. Could you just do just a couple of minutes about kind of just logistically, how does it work? How does your current program work? Right. And then to get into those other issues, I think would be really interesting, because I know you're facing that yeah. same thing and you're seeing yeah. that same growing population. Right, yeah. right. so we have a, our, our flagship program is the Supportive Day program. And that is currently, always was, and is currently a four day a week program, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday. But what we've added, and we added this in different locations, again, because we didn't have our own place, um, was a Thursday program which centers around the Memory and Music Cafe. So Memory Cafes are, are also a growing sort of movement um, nationwide, uh, and they started actually in Europe. Um, so it's um, ca little um, sort of informal social settings where people who are dealing with issues, particularly of dementia, um, can have be, be comfortable and be with a group of um, professionals and others dealing with the same issues in an informal way. Ours happens to be centered around music. And we have live music every Thursday. Um, today we had, I think, 35 folks come and join us for a couple of hours. We had seven or eight musicians and... And when does it run to? Uh, that's on from Thursday ten, from Thursdays from 10 to noon. From 10 to noon. Yeah, so um, that's our Thursday program right now. We want to expand on that at overtime too. And what's, and what's um, amazing, so I, as you know, I do this in quite a few communities. This is, I think, the biggest program in the state. And it went from the zero, the yes. cafe, yeah. to the biggest, I, I don't yeah. know any program that runs weekly. And, and it's, a, it's a wonderful, it's known in the community now as, you know, I'm going to go to music on Thursday. Yeah. You know, right. And then, and, yeah. Um, but all the studies that we know of in using music mm -hmm. from, from the mm -hmm. elders' era, you know, even those that are really struggling with dementia get into that music and they're singing oh, they along do. and they're shimmying in they their do. chairs. The other thing that I love about the cafe is that it's also a place where caregivers do go. That's right. With their elders, mm -hmm. and, and they get a bit of time to be with their peers and mm -hmm. exchange ideas and talk. Mm -hmm. So the elders are having a wonderful time mm -hmm. and the caregivers um, are getting some support from one another. And I don't see yeah. how it could be any better. It's so no. awesome. And they're having a wonderful time too. It is, yeah, um, they are. Yeah, yeah it, it's they are. really it's great. Yeah. We, we are, I think, the only cafe, as far as I can remember, that operates weekly. Most, um, in many communities, it's maybe once a month or every two weeks. Um, and um, I could be wrong about that, but most recently, that's what I think is, is to be true. I've also, I'm, um, on a quarterly basis, I engage with a um, sort of a, a conference call. We, mm -hmm. There's this big statewide sort of conference call that all people who run cafes can call into, and they have a centralized meeting as well. You call in if you okay. can't be there. Um, but And so I participate in those. It's called the Percolator, um, and it was started by Oh, this Somebody woman. in one of the communities that you work uh, in. Yeah, yeah, anyway. No, she's fr she's from Waltham, and, she, and she yeah. run, she's from a Jewish family and children's services right. of uh, of um, right. Metro, not of Metro West, of so like Greater Boston. Yeah. Just an incredible person whose name is escaping me because, of course, I'm losing my grip. That'll that'll, <laughs> yes. that'll come to me. But she just so, she did this from catchy. scratch. Yes, she did. But, but it's just yeah. it's it's kind of like when you describe the the benefit of the of the actual the memory cafe in mm -hmm. terms of getting caregivers together. Yeah to kind of share their experiences. Right. The great benefit of the, of the percolator is for all these people, many of, whom, many of these programs are volunteer programs, right. and they're totally by themselves and they're trying to figure it out mm -hmm. as opposed to saying, the wheel has been invented. Yeah. There are, there's a lot of this that we can really help mm -hmm. with. So those conversations, and I bet right. you're really helpful in those conversations. It's, it's wonderful. Beca beca yeah. Because of the perspective you can bring from the program right. you're doing. Right. And just I wanted to say the last couple of times I participated in those meetings, um, we're starting to get calls in from 
Minnesota, Arizona, <laughs> Utah. I'm serious. Um, all over the country. So it really is a movement in, yes, in a lot yes. of ways. Yes, yes. And it's gone from zero. The first one in Massachusetts was done actually in my hometown in Marlboro right. by a woman named right. Tammy Pazricki. who was yeah. terrific. Mm -hmm. And I remember her describing the first two times she did it mm -hmm. and nobody came. Right. It was her and her assistant. Yeah. Nobody came. Well, this yeah. one has done nothing but grow. But yeah. And, yeah, and it's now true. there's like 180 yeah. or something. It I want to say statewide. Nothing, so there's like a lot. Yeah. It's yeah. done yeah. nothing but yeah. grow. So, I want to also just comment, sorry, I want to just comment really quickly too on the on the Center for Living and the, on the um, supportive day program again. As our elders want to be in their community, right. when you go and you observe what's going on in that room, mm -hmm. It's overwhelming. I get kind of emotional. I don't know how you do it every day. I mean, to see the elders being able to be in the community, and Horizons Geriatrics, my company, has lots of elders that yeah. participate in that. And, and they go there to meet their friends mm -hmm. that they, they wouldn't do. be able to otherwise catch up with. Right. So as much as it's respite for the caregivers mm -hmm. and the families mm -hmm. and the sons and daughters that are taking care of their parents but have to go to work, as much as it's an amazing program to give respite to them, mm -hmm. it's also so wonderful to see the elders connecting with people that they have a history with. That's right. That are there. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know, there's a couple of tables of some ladies that have been, you know, brought their kids up together mm -hmm. and, and their grandkids mm -hmm. and worked at, you know, Vineyard Dry Goods mm -hmm. with Ida Levine together right, right. in the day. Yeah. And, and they're just enjoying being together. Mm -hmm. I love that program. Yeah, yeah, it's really vibrant. It is. I think there's some, per there's a perception maybe um, on, with some folks that it's a, like a warehouse kind of place where people aren't able to really engage and that you is so not the case. You need to so come visit if that's what you're not thinking. The case. Um, it's it, warm and homey and, and, and very lovely. engaging. Yeah, it really is. Um, we have a wonderful meal program now. Um, oh, we and prepare. Again, logistically, so it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday Friday, Friday. Mm -hmm. and people come in about what time and stay um, until about what time? Um, people can begin coming at nine. So okay. we have a group that comes at nine and stays until two 30 or 3. Um, other folks who maybe don't want to get up so early, and that's, I could see that being me, um, they come at around 11, 11, between 11 and 11.30, and time to, for lunch, so that lunch is part of their day. Um, and then everybody is heading home between 2.30 and 3. And you actually prepare food there, right? We do. Yeah, because you've actually we got do. a kitchen. That's one of the mm -hmm. nice things about that facility, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, which, we wanna, which we want to mm -hmm. develop into an even better kitchen. And um, yeah, but the food is, is great. And it's a, I feel, I've always felt that food, food is a real, uh, g gives us the ability to really get people together. So when you're sitting at Absolutely. a table, having a great meal um, with pre people that you're getting to know or you've known for a while, um, it's, it's just, it's, it makes your day. Well, so. in, that, in that age group, mm -hmm. if you think back about our grandmothers mm -hmm. or, or our mm -hmm. mothers, um, mm -hmm. some of us are old, um, me, um, <laughs> The, no, that's what they did. That. That's what they did, though. Yeah. They sat around the mm -hmm. kitchen table and they and had that was the best place in the house. And they had yeah. soup on the stove. Right. Yeah. Right. And that's where everybody was. And that's what it feels like to me mm -hmm. is that the that we help them sort of step back to a really comfortable time, mm -hmm. and sit around the kitchen table and talk mm -hmm. to one another. And mm -hmm. and as you know, the program has wonderful pieces to it, such as you know the trivia that you do and yeah. the current event stuff that you do. Mm -hmm. And the bingo is my favorite. I love bingo. Everybody um, loves bingo. <laughs> Bingo. It's a oh, great, it's a, it's a please go look, <laughs> yeah. it, stop in and see it if you so haven't you have had the stuff. opportunity. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, we'll, we will ask our good friend Carl, who is always uh, uh, in the back Behind watching the us and trying to figure out how to jazz this Mr. up. Mr. Oz. So, if, if, you know, you get the contact information so that if anybody is watching and mm -hmm. is not connected in this yes. and think that they just want to stop by, yeah. Just right, mm -hmm. that they'll have a phone number they can call, maybe they have an email address that they yeah. can reach out to, right? Yeah. So that that'll yeah. be... That's We're great. very flexible. Um, yeah. You know, if it only works for you to come one day a week, fine. You, you know, we will whatever works, whatever works. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so now, go to where how how you think that fits into how you've seen the you know this population evolving. Right. Where you think all of that right. is going. Right. What what other pieces of this puzzle you think would really help my friends Frank and Mary? Mm -hmm. If Mary's got problems mm -hmm. or if Frank's got problems, mm -hmm. be able to stay at home. Yeah. I think it goes to um, a broader community awareness and a community understanding of what particularly dementia and Alzheimer's is 
and how people can live with it. I went to a conference recently, last week as a matter of fact, the whole staff went to the Alzheimer's conference in Worcester. By the and Alzheimer's Association. Yeah. Yes, yeah. but yes, exactly. Yeah. And um, a great deal of the focus of the keynote speaker was um, y you're living with this. This, you, you, how, you know, how do you live well with um, a dementia diagnosis? And I think mo uh, until now, and I hope it's changing, and I want to be part of that change, um, people get that, someone gets that diagnosis and they retreat. The, first of all, physicians and even neurologists don't know what to tell people. They give them the diagnosis and well, I'm so sorry, but I don't know what else to tell you. Right. You just, I don't know. To, Call uh, the Alzheimer's Association. They don't Association. get any yeah. information on how to deal with it, where to go, what the resources what's are. What's going to happen next. What's going to happen next, what, what can be expected. There's just so much unknown and people go home and figure that's it, I can't go anywhere now. I'm, I've got to stay home, I'm afraid of this. Um, I'm afraid to go out into the community. Um, and it, it just perpetuates this sort of lack of understanding. And I, I think that's where we need to go. We need to sort of educate people. You can live for a long time well, with a diagnosis and you can live well, and can exactly. Live well. And your caregivers, your mm -hmm. spouse or your children, who are taking care of you can also live well, but they need a lot of support. Um, and, and how does that, how, how do you go about that? How do you go about that? Because I, I, once again, when I'm off island, I always tell folks, you gotta see what's going on in Martha's Vineyard. This is the cutting edge in terms of where you've already gotten to. And, and Sandy, you see, you're seeing this all the time too. And, and, and so uh, to the two of you kind of, so w w where do you go? What are the things that are, we've got so much that is there, but what are the things mm -hmm. that, you, mm -hmm. that you kind of think aren't there and you know, yeah. that may be where you need to go? Well, what we started to, well, one thing we started two years ago was a support group, a, a caregiver support group specifically for um, family members, informal caregivers taking care of loved ones with dementia. Um, there are other support groups for people t caring for somebody with uh, mostly, you know, physical issues, but it's, it's different and we found that there were caregivers who would go to that care, that support group and feel like there were certain things they just didn't feel comfortable discussing because it's it's so different. There's different issues, there's behavioral issues that, and just things that are more comfortable to talk about so, with somebody who you know is going through the same kind of thing. Um, so we did that, that's a twice a month. We have on, a, on um, the second and fourth Friday every month, we have a that specialized dementia caregiver support group which has been very helpful to lots of people. Where is that? Um, that's at the center. Nice. At the center, we have, awesome. a, we have a nice kind of meeting room, a nice small meeting room where we can meet there. And I suppose that's one of the advantages of having your own space now, is you mm -hmm. have that mm -hmm. flexibility. You can schedule things right. at any time. It's a beautiful yeah. space. Right. Yeah. And, you have to, and you have space right. to kind of, you can continue grow, pro, growing right. programs there right. you've got more space. Mm -hmm. right. And then the other, what we've learned with that too, is that we get a lot of calls from people who are new to the diagnosis or maybe they've had it for a while, they don't know where to go, they're not comfortable yet going out into the community or even going to a support group. And sometimes just somebody who'll come into your home and give you some information, talk to you about your specific, what issues you're specifically dealing with. Um, it can be really just um, a comforting and just a way for people to feel, begin to feel more comfortable um, talking about it. Just talking about Just it. Just talking about now, it. Now, Sandy, you must hit that too. You must get calls from folks who are kind of starting to deal with this and, and maybe they haven't reached out to any in, into the community at all and they're just trying to figure it out, you know. It, it comes what? on so slowly at times mm -hmm. that you, before you really realize it, you're so in the deep end of yes. the pool and by yourself. That's true. I have one fellow that I, I met, he it came on so slowly for him in caring for his wife that he hadn't left the house in two and a half years because he couldn't leave her alone. And when I asked him, you know, what he was doing to get some help with all of that, he said, I can't go looking for help. I can't leave her for a minute. I can't leave her. So, and, and she he had kind of like, well, that's a good way know, of putting it, just, it, just kind of fallen into the right? deep end of the pool right. yeah. just because it's and day to just day. just didn't realize. I mean, I think I, I see it constantly. I had a call yesterday from a gal who's, whose sister is living with their parents, they're both 88, they both have Alzheimer's, 
and the, the rest of the family just thought she was doing great and doing a wonderful job caring for her parents. And, and, it, and Protective got called in because she, the daughter, who's the caregiver, is now suicidal. She's been in the house with her parents, aging parents, for a few years. With both of and, them. And she hadn't, doesn't know where to get some help. So I think finding a way to let people know what the, what the services are right. and get that person into their home. Mm -hmm. um, the other piece of it is, is that, the, and we talked about this a little bit before the show, is, is the lack of caregiver support mm -hmm. in, the, in the agencies. That, so the Executive Office of Elder Affairs, our local ASAP office, our local Elder Services office, does an amazing job at trying to help get caregivers into the home to give respite to the, the daughter that's been there or the husband that's been there for two and a half years without any help. And um, they would love to. And, and the agencies that have the contracts with Elder Services to provide the caregivers, they would give respite um, who are trained in how to deal with the elders. Um, the agencies would love to provide the, the many, many hours a week that our elders' families are eligible for through the elder services programs, but they don't have capacity to because our community doesn't have enough caregivers. Right. They would provide it in a minute. And, and I think, to be honest with you, the, the agencies are taking it on the chin a little bit for not being able to provide the caregivers. It's like, um, how can you do this today, right? Uh, but they don't have by, them. Right. You know? So right. how do we fix, we've been talking about that on the show for a long time. How do we fix that? Right. Right. We've got to flood our community with caregivers mm -hmm. to support the family members that just need to go to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Leslie, for, and Leslie from your perspective, what, what is, how do you see kind of not necessarily in the near term, but in the longer term, the, the role of the Center for Living in terms of dealing with some of this stuff, in terms of dealing with these things? Yeah, uh, it, it's, that's a tough one. Um, it's, I, I think it, the role that the Center and Sandy's, you know, Geriatric Horizons, Horizons I'm saying that right? right yeah. um, Elder Services, there's got to be a way for all of us to figure this out, um, but it is going to take um, it's going to take a lot of effort, and and you know some of the underlying issues on the vineyard just are there, and I'm not sure um, how to fix those. Housing, you know, um, um, of you know wages that are um, li living wages, you know, for um, caregivers. You know, it's really just it's a very it's big really challenge. a challenge, right? Because just for the cost those folks of living here, where, if, where there isn't, or, or for even folks who are taking care of somebody, mm -hmm. but you just need a break. Right, yeah. no, and, and so there's somebody that needs to be that person that you can yeah. pay, right? Who is going to be doing these things? Mm -hmm. But those folks are just—you just get the sense they're not around. Well, and again, now, not to you know sort of beat this forever, but uh, again, there are some programs through Elder Services that would subsidize greatly subsidize. You and I work on the Frail Elder Waiver with right. folks all the time, and and that would in any other community bring almost you know like round the clock care under mass health and and people that don't know that they could be eligible for mass health are and we can help them get there um however what are we doing that for yeah, because right. then we can't get the caregivers because you can't get the caregivers um so that's the, the right. that's the piece that i keep banging my head against right the and that's a tough one and that's yeah. a tough yeah. one yeah. well and the only other thought that I've had over time is, is there maybe there's a way to develop a, a core of volunteers, trained volunteers, yep. who wouldn't necessarily have to do caregiving, but could, could be companions. You know, if we, if Sometimes that's all they need. Yeah, if we could match, you know, Excuse a volunteer me. companion. Beth Salzberg. Thank you. Is the woman. <laughs> Very good. And as it <laughs> happened, not three right. and the <laughs> reason why, you were th why, you, why this is triggering is that having done all of this other great stuff, she is now, uh, one of the major things that she's focusing on is this program called Dementia Friends. Yes. Yeah. A program designed to train people yeah. or to help people mm -hmm. to learn how to deal with folks who have got dementia, to make them first, first of all, as you suggested, more comfortable. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, you know, you don't have to walk on the other side of the street, you know, or you don't have to not visit your best friend of 20 years because now they've got dementia and you don't know what to say, yeah. which happens, it right? Does. So, and because and, 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 I guess this was going to lead into the next question, because earlier on you had said a piece of this is about education in the community. Mm -hmm. how, how do you, what's the role of all of that right. in terms of dealing with these, with some of these right. issues, yeah. right? Yeah. And, yeah. and what is that? And, and what's the role of the center in terms of any of right. that kind of training? Mm -hmm. And it, what is your own mm -hmm. sense of that? Well, 
I, we have a wonderful community here. I think that we've talked about this. It's, it's kind of a, you know, we're, we're a finite group, so to speak. Um, you know, we're a small island. Um, most people are here because they want to be here. And so I think there's an opportunity here, um, and we're a very um, um, volunteer-oriented and um, um, yeah. very Compared generous yeah. community. Yeah. Yeah. So yes. I think there's an opportunity between that and some kind of a way to train and and um, and we've been, you know, we've been working on that. Actually, we've been working on a safe seniors program, which has a dementia component to it. Um, with all the councils on aging. So we have a robust council on aging system here, so to yeah. speak, um, that the Center for Living works with them very closely. So I think there's, there's the community base in place, the community agencies and the, even, the, even the municipal agencies in place that all working together, we can, we can really work on something quite robust to support the community and the caregivers and all seniors living in the community. So that's a, that's an education piece that we'll continue to work on. We can educate first responders, and um, you know we can t think about the hospital. The whole community at the hospital of employees is going to have to be trained, and that's been mandated um, that's right. by the legislature over time. I'm not sure when it's due to be done sure. in the next, next two or three, three years. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say um, the, the legislation was actually. Originally right. designed, there was a, the, the chair of that committee is actually our state rep from back in Marlboro, yeah. right? And that's a wonderful, just once again, just to gear up all of those folks, because right, right. they fix it all the time too, mm -hmm. right? I, I still remember exactly. the client who was, who was talking about bringing his mother to the, to the local hospital, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and she, she banged her head, right? So he's bringing her in, and she's, you know, and, and, and uh, so the, the, the emergency nurse, the nurse, the intake nurse is talking to her. And she's and and she's saying, oh, I didn't, no, I didn't bang my head, mm -hmm. you know, to the emergency nurse, and oh, you know, and the, and the son is trying to go, dementia, yeah, <laughs> right? Right. like you know, yeah. but the but the emergency nurse clearly, you know, just wasn't tuned into this, so to, so to ha so it, it, that may that may kind of be the moral of the story that kind of going into the future, this is really what we need. If the whole if everybody's aware of how mm -hmm. this works, mm -hmm. then in terms of finding those volunteers. And in terms of keeping those kinds of things from happening, and in terms of Frankie and Mary being able to stay yeah. home, yeah. right, it all kind of works. Yeah, and the, and the bus drivers are educated, and the and EMTs and the police. I mean, an EMT goes to a home on an emergency. Perhaps there's a couple there in their 80s. The, the husband has had a heart attack. The wife has dementia. They've got to know to bring her with them to the <laughs> hospital. I cannot leave her. <laughs> Or they've and, got to be able to figure that out. They an, can't leave her. Another excellent point. Exactly. You know. So thank you very much. It's, thank you. I know it's been a while since you've been on. The organization has just, you know, kind of flowered. There are some wonderful things that are happening, right? Yes. There are some wonderful things happening in Martha's Vineyard, and I think the two, the two of you are kind of responsible for a lot of that. So, well, thank you. Yeah, Sandy, but too. really, yeah. but Pretty really. Yeah. So thank you very much. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. If you haven't been to the Center for Living, you gotta go. Just stop by. You know, it's a dirt road, you know, and it looks, but there's a big sign, right? And just go in, you know. And if and if you have somebody, if you have some memory issues yourself or you know somebody, you gotta know this is an incredible resource, probably the best in the state, right? It's a, just a hidden gem, so you gotta do this. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you, Sandy, again for be, being the co-host. Thank you very much, Leslie, and we'll see you on the next uh installment of Frank and Mary here on Martha's Vineyard. Thank you.